Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make a very inexpensive Halloween costume. It's going to be a horse costume for a child, but you can totally upsize it and make it for an adult. This is part of a collaboration I'm doing with my friend Emmy over at the Hectanuga One crafting channel. She has a lot of really great projects. In fact, she has a pirate costume, so you'll be able to go and see her free pirate costume that you can make. But she has crocheting projects and a lot of recycled projects, a lot of jewelry making, very inexpensive stuff. I think you're really going to like it. And she's just really sweet too, so I think you'll really enjoy that. So what we're going to make the um, our costume out of will be cardboard boxes. I got this nice long one that I think will be great for the torso of the horse. I'll make a eye slit there on the top and the bottom so my daughter can wear it. I've got some large pieces of cardboard that I will be cutting up to make the horse's body silhouette and the head silhouette. And um, I got a pair of old cow girl boots that are, you know, too small, and I've got a pair of old jeans that are too small that were in the bag for Goodwill that I rescued, and they are going to, um, to become part of this costume as well, and I plan on just using up some other scraps that I have. We challenged ourselves to stay under $10 for this costume. So far, everything I have is free. I may have to go and buy a cowgirl hat if I can't find the two that I own already. What's up with that? But um, but I think this is going to be a very economical costume that you can make as well. And if you want more costume ideas, um, my husband and I are going to be going to a Halloween party this year as Frankenstein's monster and the Bride of Frankenstein. And uh, we will have tutorials on how to make that costume as well. So right now, kid's costume coming up. We'll have a couple's costume uh, in a couple of weeks. So please stay right here and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, here is that box that I showed you in the last clip, and what I'm going to do is use a craft knife to cut an eye slit in the top of the box. You can see I'm using an X-Acto knife here. I'm quickly going to switch over to using a box cutter or snap off blade craft knife because uh, I just can't get the leverage I want with an X-Acto. It doesn't seem to uh, slice through the cardboard quite as well. But use what you have um, and just be very careful on this step. You want to do the same thing to the bottom so you have a hole going all the way through the box. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. Now here you want to take the flaps you've just cut and tape them to the inside of the box using some packing tape or duct tape or whatever you have. It's not a big deal. Now you can see here I have the knife I'm going to use. This works so much better. Uh, it's just a regular um, snap off blade craft knife and I have drawn the horse's head out of a piece of cardboard and I'm just going to cut away the excess. You'll need one horse head and you're also going to need one horse tail, and you'll see me sketch and draw that out in just a second. Uh, you want to make nice, short, clean cuts, and then just break it away from the excess. See, we've got that right there. Now I'm using a marker just to sketch on a tail, and really what this is, you could just keep the tail like that, but I'm going to uh, embellish it with some yarn later. So it's basically um, going to going to be kind of like a substrate to hold the uh, yarn. I'm putting slits in both the bottom of the horse head and the horse tail, and that's how I'm going to attach it to the box, kind of like an insert slot A into slot B type deal, but it's going to help me make a really secure connection. Here you can see me cutting the um, matching slits into the box. Um, you just want to make a double cut and then poke it through. There we go. It will take a little bit of finessing. I'm going through two layers on the end of the box because um, because that's where the flaps are folded in. There we go. It's a little bit a uh, little bit of trial and error here. And there you go. You can see how the head slides right in. Tail goes the same way. Now you're going to need to cut out legs, and you'll need four legs in all because you're going to have two legs on each side of the horse. Uh, my back legs I cut out of a small piece of cardboard. The front legs, I thought I was going to be able to get both legs as one piece out of a one piece of cardboard, but it didn't work. So what you want to do is design your legs, uh, design one leg, trace it on another piece of cardboard, and then you can cut that out, and that way they will match. It's not that big of a deal. You can kind of make it up as you go along. You can see how I have the legs on the opposite side glued on, and you can see what I mean about trying to cut the front legs from um, a big piece. I wanted to get them all, but it didn't work out. Um, but I decided to keep that whole body piece too, just so I could um, have a little more stability on my costume. I'm hoping this is something that may get used a few times, or maybe in a school play or something. I'm gluing the, the uh, hind legs on here. The nice thing about having them separate is that you can kind of tip them or um, you know tuck them however they seem to look best. Now I have Mod Podge, about three parts Mod Podge, one part water, and I'm going to cover the entire 
horse with torn construction paper and Mod Podge. And the reason I watered it down is so it can really soak into the paper. I'm covering the entire thing. This took like hours. It was crazy because I was too lazy to go to Walmart and buy a can of 97 cent can of spray paint. But this works and it actually makes the horse a lot more durable and look a lot nicer, I think. So here it is all Mod Podged up. The glue, the Mod Podge hasn't dried yet, but this is what it's going to look like at this stage. Now it's dry and I am just going to use a permanent marker to draw on the eyeballs and uh, mouth and nose and all that jazz. You could also use paint. Use what you have as long as it's waterproof. Okay, so I've cut a uh, large piece of felt that I had in my stash, and I just kind of cut a couple slits in the middle of it to go over the hole in the top. Now I'm cutting legs off of a pair of jeans that were going to Goodwill, just using my regular fabric scissors. And I think I'm going to keep those jeans because there's some cute little pockets on the back I might use in another craft project. Now um, all you need to do is glue the legs inside of these cowboy boots, which are again a cast off. I cut more slits in the felt and then I'm using hot glue to attach the felt to the inside of the horse. That way if that saddle ever needs to be removed so the horse can be used for something else, um, it's totally removable. And now I'm using binder clips to hold the legs onto my horse. It'll kind of balance out the weight because I have this uh, sitting on a stool while I'm putting it together. Now I'm doing a little bit of hot glue on the inside. All my gluing I'm trying to do on the inside when possible. And the clip just holds it in place while the glue dries. And I'm sneaking a little bit of glue under the other leg just to secure it all at one time. Now the mane is super easy to do. I'm using a clothespin just to uh, hold the end of glue there, end of the glue, and I'm using some hot glue right along the top of the neck. And I'm just simply wrapping black yarn all the way around. And I'm gonna repeat this process until I get up to the ears. It takes a little time and your yarn will probably get tangled on you and it may be a little aggravating, but, uh, but I think you'll find that it's totally worth it. I'm using some thick and chunky black yarn. When it's all adhered, I'm simply going in with a pair of scissors and uh, snipping it off. And then you can give a little haircut to make it a little neater if you like. I did run another bead of hot glue along the, uh, the back of the neck there just to secure that mane a little bit more because I don't want hair falling out all over the neighborhood. And for the tail, I'm just wrapping the yarn around my arm many, 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 many times. I'm actually going to do two hanks of yarn like this. And... Um, you want to, you know, do it as much as you want to get the tail as full as you want. And then after you've done that, you're going to cut through that loop of yarn that you've made with a pair of cloth scissors or ribbon scissors. Whatever you use for your, for your sewing will be fine for this as long as it's got a sturdy enough blade. You know, your big sewing shears should work pretty good for this. And then you want to tie that hank of yarn into a knot at the end so you don't have any loose pieces. And I'm sure somebody with more um, yarn experience than I do would have a better, probably Emmy has a better way to do this. You could ask her. I'm sure she would tell you a much better way to do this. Um, but I'm just tying that into a knot very clumsily, I might add. Here we go. Oh, it's in a knot. Will wonders ever cease. Okay. Now we are going to attach it to the tail with some hot glue. So if you made a couple of these uh, gobs of yarn, yarn gobs, yeah, that's what we should call them, then, uh, then just glue them right next to each other on the tail. And that little nub of the tail kind of makes it so it's going to pop out behind the uh, body a little bit. Now I'm taking some strips of brown felt. I just took one 9x12 sheet and cut it into three uh, hot dog lengths, you know, hot dog ways, you know what I mean, long ways. And then I'm just going to wrap the tail with this and hot glue the uh, felt to itself kind of just around wrapping it around the tail to help secure in that yarn and make it look a little nicer because it looks a little well let's say ugly right now so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tidy that right up there we go and uh, you can see me in my normal working in the studio attire yoga pants an old sundress and sweater dress all layered up I'm very fashionable give the tail a trim and you're good to go on that respect. Now here is something I would change if I was doing this costume over again. I am making um, straps out of duct tape. I'm just folding the duct tape on itself and I need 41 inch long straps for a child's costume. Um, and what I noticed after I got the costume done was that duct tape is very slippery and likes to slide down uh, kids shoulders when they're wearing it. So what I will be doing at the end is adding some felt onto the duct tape where it like hits the shoulders. But duct tape does make a really strong strap and uh, and it attaches really well and securely to the costume. So I have two 41 inch long pieces. I am trimming the um, edge where the two edges of duct tape meet because there's some stickiness there 
course, that stickiness would probably hold your costume on better. But I'm trimming that off so it doesn't get caught in anybody's hair because that will just be so, so aggravating for somebody. Uh, so just go ahead and trim off that rough edge on both pieces. And then we are going to add some Velcro to the end of each of those strips so that we'll be able to um, to take the uh, straps on and off and also adjust them. And I'm using the fuzzy side of the Velcro. So again, it doesn't get caught on the costume or on people's clothing. Um, and I'm just using hot glue to stick it to the end of those duct tape straps. Uh, surprisingly enough, the duct tape did not melt with the hot glue and that's a high temp gun. So yay, no catastrophe. Now I'm hot gluing the end without Velcro to the inside of the horse up near the head on the head end, <laughs> on the nice end of the horse. The Velcro is going to go on the business end of the horse. <laughs> There we go. So get that nice and secure. Now, what I'm going to do here is take two strips of Velcro that are as wide as the horse, and glue, and that's the loop side, and I'm going to glue that inside under the rump area there, and that's going to be so I can adjust the straps, make them shorter or longer, depending on who's wearing the costume. So just uh, my favorite thing, hot glue. I'm telling you, I could like build a house with hot glue and cardboard. I'm telling you what, that's good stuff. And I'm just going to put that in. I'm putting two strips. One strip is right uh, next to the hole, the opening of the costume. And the next one is going to be all the way to the back. You'll see what I mean. I'm going to point to it. You see that one's right along there. Don't pay no attention to that Velcro on the felt. That was a bad idea. So that's why I didn't mention it earlier. I kind of make these costumes up as I go along. It's the same fashion as I make a pinata or a uh, or a parade float. It's just you kind of have to tweak it as you go. And I thought I'd have like a saddle that wrapped around the uh, the rider, but I changed my mind. So don't pay any attention to that Velcro. So the other strip of Velcro is going right along the uh, the back of the horse body, and that is again so I can adjust the straps. I think he's looking pretty darn good right now. I'm really impressed with that. You can add string around. You can add a bridle on your horse if you want to. Um, oh, there I'm demonstrating how you can put the uh, straps in there. And uh, the Velcro I'm using and the duct tape are from Paper Mart. The Velcro is great. It's like, like $2 a roll or three, two, between 2 and $3. It's a really good bargain. And here you can see Maisie using the costume. <laughs> Isn't she cute? Um, so there you can see the straps. They are staying up at the moment. I crisscrossed them in the back, but they definitely need some felt on them or something to make them a little bit more grippy onto her shoulders so that when she's going around Halloween night, it doesn't, um, it doesn't slide off. Uh, so there's my cute little cowgirl. I hope you like this project. If you would like to see some other Halloween projects, please um, go to my channel, subscribe. I have a whole playlist of really fun Halloween projects for you to enjoy. And um, I'll also share with you right here, you'll see a little a thumbnail of it, the costume that we made for the entire Girl Scout troop for Thinking Day. We did China last year. We made a big Chinese dragon. And you know what? It's the exact same idea because we're using cardboard and, you know, tablecloths and spray paint and, you know, use what you have. You can make some really awesome costumes that way. And I think that you'll make the best costumes that way because you made it um, with what you had. You'll always remember fondly how you made these costumes and it's just so much fun. So I wanna thank you so much for checking out my channel if this is your first time here. And if you're one of my fans, please go check out Emmy's channel over at Hectanuga1 and uh, subscribe because she's so much fun. I'll put a link below so you can find her channel as well. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy crafting.